TIFU by telling my GF about war. I, 38M, have recently started dating, 31F. I've been single for nearly six years prior to this. I had a very difficult relationship previously. I felt used for my stability and the constancy that I provided. I'm not the kind of person that thinks that all women are awful or that the dating world is entirely and perpetually flawed for men in my age range. But, typically, I have poor judgment when it comes to other people's intentions and that has certainly lead to a string of situations where I was valued almost exclusively for what I provided and not for who I was. To some degree I think that's alright. But I needed a break so I left the dating scene for a longer period of time. I'm a veteran. I served following 9-11 and while most people in my life know that I am a combat veteran there. Knowledge starts and stops there. I live in a large city and there seems to be a general lack of empathy or respect for military service. I am pretty okay with that in that I generally don't want to relive that part of my life. That doesn't mean I didn't enjoy or that I am not proud of my time in the uniform. I am. But I am very alright with moving forward in my life and not having it be central to my current experiences. The problem is that I have PTSD. Not as bad as most I think that I made out very lucky compared to some and the bulk of my symptoms are not constant. I tend to get a little tense sometimes at night and can struggle with vivid dreams this is not an every night thing. It comes in fits and starts lasting usually a week. Maybe two if it is a bad go. And then fading back. Very rarely I have extremely intense dreams that wake me suddenly. I can be disoriented during this time or very emotionally activated. After I separated from the military I became a military contractor and changed my career to a technical field. I got myself educated, trained in a technical specialty and built work experience working as a civilian contractor overseas where I built myself a substantial nest egg. I was mentored by good men on investments and income generation and have done very well for myself. I hold a full-time position back in the States now with a generous salary and benefits. I've taken care of myself physically and despite having several injuries I've stayed very active. So, in regards to PTSD, I have it much better than some and I'm very grateful that is the case. I'm sorry this is so long. This girl and I met several years ago but I was not dating and she was seeing someone. We clicked right away but never spoke of it, or crossed any lines, and did not maintain communication, to the point where when I thought of her, I did not reach out. I wondered if I'd imagined the entire thing or if she'd felt it as well. Well, a few months ago, she reached out and we met up and the sparks were there. The boyfriend she was seeing is long gone and we've started to date. This is the first time I've opened myself to a romantic relationship in a very long time. Things have progressed and she has begun spending the night. This is where my first anxiety has come into place. I didn't want to suddenly have a bad episode at night with her there. I didn't want to speak about or even acknowledge my PTSD. I'm embarrassed not only of having it but also of speaking about it because so many men endured and endure so much worse. I have so little to complain about. But with her spending the night I had to at least tell her that sometimes I can wake up suddenly and seem very frightened or alert. I don't or haven't done anything like dive onto the floor or reach to arm myself. But I do suddenly bolt upright sometimes. I have called out before. And other times I get the shakes for a few minutes and feel very confused about where I am. So, I told her, and she was an angel about it. But she also asked me to talk about what it was like with her and some of the things that I remember and struggle with. In the past, I've never gone there with someone. I think sometimes the truth is not what people, particularly women, in my experience, really want to hear. But, in the past, 
I've been often criticized by past partners of being emotionally unavailable and closed off. They've been critical of my inability to be open with them and have expressed feeling like there were parts of me that were a stranger to them and that it was part of what drove our relationship into negative places. Without excusing any of my ex-girlfriend's decisions or behaviors she wasn't wrong in this criticism. But still, I couldn't bring myself to really open up to my new GF. She pressed gently but left it alone. She was very sweet through this. Very encouraging. She told me that there was nothing that I could say that would change where we were going together. And that she appreciates anyone who served our country. She's a generally empathetic human being and I felt relieved that she didn't really press me to elaborate in that moment. I felt more secure and safe. She told me she loved me. She clings to my arm when we walk together and she compliments me on my body. My clothes. She tells me that I'm handsome and that she feels lucky. She posted me on her social media and introduced me to friends, co-workers, her parents. Three days ago, though, I did have a fairly rough wake up one night. It was not my worst no yelling. But I bolted upright in bed suddenly and startled her awake and apparently sat very silent and tense for a few seconds while she tried to ask me if I was alright. I don't remember her asking me repeatedly. I only remember hearing her and telling her that I was fine and thinking it was the first time. She'd asked. I settled fairly quickly after. I usually do. But she, again, gently asked me to share with her what I see during these nightmares or what memories I have that bother me. I looked at her, this beautiful young woman, and, for the first time in a very long time, I felt seen and I just didn't want to ruin things. I didn't want to push her away. I've done very well on my own but there's something blissful in being loved and loving someone and for whatever reason I opened up. I shared with her a single account that sometimes bothers me. She asked detailed questions and I answered. At first. Anyway. I answered openly. But I began to see. Even in the dark. Her expression changing. I saw worry in her face. I wouldn't call it fear but I certainly saw uncertainty. And I understood what was happening too late because her next question was. Did you enjoy being there? Though? Quote. I'm convinced almost every combat veteran can tell you that they enjoyed it. Even the scariest. Most violent moments. There's some part of us that comes alive in a way during those situations that just can't when we get back home. It's a cliche by now but it's real. And she asked the question knowing the answer. I saw it in her face. Hoping I would say that I didn't. I couldn't lie to her but I didn't answer the question. I tried to hit that middle ground. At this point I just wanted her to leave it be. I wished I'd never opened my mouth. That was three days ago. She's been distant through texts and we haven't seen each other since. There's nothing. I don't think, that I can do now. Dating has been very difficult for me. I'm so discouraged. I felt that this girl and I had found something. As a veteran we are constantly told to talk about it. Whether you're on TikTok or Instagram there are just mountains of posts from people. Well-meaning people. Telling you to share and to speak. Friends and family all want you to confide in them. Or, in the very least. Know that you could if you wanted to. But I mean this when I say for those of us that served. You really can't. Or, in the very least, you will never really be able to tell whether you can or can't until you've made the choice and the consequences of that choice are out of your hands. I was falling for this girl and now, despite my best attempts to stay positive, I can't help but feel she saw all of me and walked away. Part of me knows that's alright. It's her choice. And there's integrity in letting someone have that part of you so they can decide if they want to deal with it or not. But part of me can't help but feel like I will never find a partner. And that there is a part of me that I have to hide from those that I love because it is more than anyone can handle. 
I don't know how to shake the profound sense of loneliness I suddenly feel. I find myself wishing I'd never responded to her to begin with. I find myself wishing that I knew better than to even attempt to try and date again. TL. Doctor I told my girlfriend a single experience from a wartime deployment and now she is distancing herself from me. Update. Wow. So. A lot of comments to go through. Thank you to everyone for sharing advice. For those of you that suggested I speak to her and express that I didn't want to upset her but I wanted to be honest that's the route I want to go with. I plan on doing so tomorrow. I won't get into the particulars of what I shared for the comment. S. That asked. I will say. However. It did not include any war crimes. And I didn't commit any during my time in service. I read a few comments that were very critical, skeptical. Summarizing. Of the military. That's alright. Guys. You can have your opinions. I can only state that for my part. And in my experience. The guys in the uniform were really good human beings from very diverse backgrounds who genuinely wanted to do the right thing over there. It's okay if you don't believe me I know that this topic tends to produce a lot of very intense opinions. I just wanted to take a second to state very clearly that during my career wearing the uniform I didn't know anything other than the guys around me trying to act like good people. Even the guys who weren't particularly good soldiers for whatever reason weren't evil people. Friend PTSD is nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing. She may need processing time. I had a good mate in the military who shared a couple of the things that hung over him and geez. Definitely needed processing time for that. It didn't change the way I felt about him. I hope this all works out for you man. Hey. I can't say much about your GFS feelings as they are her own. However I don't think you made a mistake. You were incredibly brave telling her and a lot of people would appreciate your honesty. I have. Friends and family who have served. A couple have used me as a sounding board in the past as they found it easier to talk to a woman. And I am pretty unflappable. I've been told some horrific things. What keeps them up what haunts their dreams. Inappropriate moments they've laughed their asses off. Because they got used to talking to me they also started telling me some of the fun things. As they no longer bottled any military memory. From what I've seen is it tends to be all or nothing. You share it all or share none. There are a lot of women out there who will be able to hear your truths and your fears without. Judging. It's a whole different world active duty. I think sometimes people are so shielded as to what actually happens it shocks them. It may be that she never really knew what happened out there and it threw her off kilter having her. Eyes open. Please don't give up talking. I hope you guys work things out or that you find someone you can share yourself with. Take care xx. People always want to say they understand. But very few have even the ability to empathize when faced with deep wounds such as the ones you carry. However, there are people out there that can, if nothing else empathize with the burden you're shouldering. Good luck. Sit down with the girl and talk. Don't let it stew in her head. You don't want her coming to you when she has already made a decision. I'm really sorry man. I don't want to publicly share any details but I have, had PTSD. Explaining my past and the fact that I enjoyed my experience has lost me friendship. Lovers and long-term partners. The fact is if I had stopped talking about it my life wouldn't be as good as it is now. It's hard but it helps. Find support groups. Find friends and you'll find people. Women even. Who accept every part of you. I'm thinking maybe share the specific parts of what you liked. Was it the air? The adventure in a new place? Feeling purpose? Feeling like you were amongst friends and helping people? Break it down into specifics. She might just flat out be scared you liked killing or blood or something like that and just not know any better. 
You guys said you don't know each other well. Correct? Women like to feel safe. Perhaps the not knowing what exactly you liked and the horror of what you went through has her thinking the worst. That trust takes time and shared experiences. If you can convince her to hang in, get to know you more, she can see she's safe and feel open again with you. She is still talking and texting? That's a great sign she hasn't given up. Good luck. I believe in you and I'm proud of you for opening up. I pay for a therapist to listen to me say this stuff aloud so I don't have to say it to my family and friends. However the therapist is also encouraging me to open up to my family about what is really going on. But I don't because I expect a similar experience to yours. I see the dilemma to be close to people we need to reveal our true selves. But I'm not convinced other people can handle the truth. I'm not a veteran but work in fire, ems so have also experienced things that normal person does not. I don't suffer PTSD from it, but have had similar reactions to stories I've told because I wasn't particularly bothered by it. I suppose like I should have been. Some people want to understand the camaraderie and sense of purpose that comes with it that can make it an overall good experience while still seeing horrible things. Being open is important but the details may not be for everyone. You should share your feelings and fears with a partner. They may be okay knowing the details but sometimes that's something you might not know until after. You should talk with her about it directly and clarify why you enjoyed it. You should talk to a specialist about what you've experienced whose job it is to talk about that stuff. They may also have advice for this situation. Therapy is not what the movies make it out to be and it's not some taboo thing. It's a person who's paid to listen impartially. So you don't feel like you're oversharing or taking up too much of their time. My uncle was in Vietnam and suffered from PTSD badly for years. He said what helped him find normalcy was medication and talking about with a counselor. His friends from the service. And his family. His family brushes him off as telling old war stories. Even though I am sure they never got the details. But you can tell he wants to talk about it still. So I'm always happy to listen and he seems to find comfort in that I don't flinch at the details. He's the kindest man I know. So talk to her. Be open that you're scared you pushed her away but want to answer her questions honestly. And find someone else that you can get into the details with. I'm no professional, but shoot me a PM if you want. I'll give you my number if you want to chat. I got told once that, you can tell war stories to civilians, but you can't tell them battle stories. That rings true from everything from warfare, to recovered psychosis, PTSD, even psychedelics, you have to know, to understand. And you can't understand what you haven't experienced. It's one thing to be open. But it's another thing to protect the ones you love from the stories they won't understand. We don't show kids horror movies because they can't tell the difference from the reality. Many combat veterans report preferring the comparative simplicity of being deployed compared to the complicated messes of civilian life. In combat there's the adrenaline rush sure, but you know your mission your goal, and though bullets and bombs are flying around you, it's much simpler. You shouldn't feel bad about this. That's just the way it is. You may be bad at explaining it to your girlfriend. Veterans are exactly taught how to handle emotions. That said, if you can afford it, then do yourself a favor and go to therapy. One-on-one -on -one and group therapy. You need to talk about your experiences and not feel so cut off from living the life you want. There's not a single goddamned person who will complain about getting the help you need. Will there always be people who need help more than you? Yes. But there will always be more if them. The medical industry is familiar with triage. But you need to speak up for yourself to get the help you need. Everyone needs help particularly if their mental state is affecting their interpersonal relationships.
you're an ideal candidate. And yes counseling is even more nebulous and complicated than normal civilian life. If you're used to achievements and goal setting, a lot of that is harder to come by in therapy. You still need it. There's nothing in your story that stands out as particularly bad or strange or weird. You like a woman and you think you may have scared her by opening up. That can happen regardless. So do yourself a favor either call the VA or call your insurance provider to find a PTSD counselor who specializes in combat veterans. You're also not the only combat veteran who's put off getting help for years or decades later. Also I really don't know even the most left-wing person who doesn't respect the troops. Sure the oil wars were messed up, but that was the failure of the politicians, not of the soldiers. If she walks, she walks. I find that most people don't actually want to know when they ask, or aren't aware of what they're asking. It blows their mind. It's a harsh reality. If she comes back and still wants to be a part of it, that's awesome. My grandfather, Vietnam, had some PTSD moments when my mom was still young. She told me that she found him out of it strangling my grandmother before he realized it was her. It's a heavy burden, but they still hold each other tightly. I think my grandmother helped him chase those demons away. I hope you find an angel to help you with yours. You should seek actual professional help and discuss with said professional and GF. What she needs to hear. You need to work through your PTSD. She does not need to get secondary PTSD. Because she loves you and is too unaware of what she is doing to herself. There are healthier ways for her to support you. Ask the professional. This is based on my experience with PTSD of mine and especially with my wife. Her childhood stories are unbelievably awful. This is my opinion of course. And you do you. Good luck and thanks for serving. Apparently. Some places are doing psilocybin therapy and has an 80% success rate after first visit. Hey man, another vet here. I've had similar conversations with my now wife. Starting when we started dating. She had a similar reaction when I answered a similar question. But she came around after a few discussions. Those who haven't experienced what we have will never understand the how it feels to be over there and how most of civilian life seems mundane by comparison. Good luck. I don't mean to be mean towards her but being in combat in actual war is a horror one might not truly understand without being there. This enjoyment or excitement you had or felt in the war is something she might not understand which could lead to her feeling confused, worried, or scared thinking you were enjoying taking others' lives. As a random internet nerd with some interest in military history, a normally function person of society doesn't understand the state of mind during war and combat. And they probably have no idea how far their extent of non-understanding goes. That's why a lot of veterans probably never talk about it. In the same way it's futile to explain colors to someone born blind. Hey thanks for sharing your story. Reading it makes me want to chime in my wife is a psychologist at the VA. She works with veterans, developing new treatments for veterans to help specifically with PTSD and related complications. I'm hoping you've already done this, but if you haven't make sure you reach out to your local VA. It is important to talk about this stuff, and doing it with a trained therapist can make a big difference. I wish you the best of luck. Sounds like you found a lovely partner. And I hope you guys are able to work through this and that you can get some help that might help. You sleep better. Good luck. I don't want to pretend that I know what you're going through but I could really relate to that part. Of being scared of sharing too much. I have MS. Diagnosed at 19. Became single a year or two after and spent my 20s thinking I would be alone forever. Why would anyone be with a guy that has a chronic disease that gradually just gets worse and worse? 
In many cases, my policy after a few years became to just get it out there as soon as possible. Not in woe is me kinda way but a matter of fact kinda way. That way they can make an informed decision and I don't have to worry about the right time to tell. Her, I know our situation is not exactly the same but my point is. Being honest is the best policy. Especially when it comes to building a relationship. After being single for about 8 years I decided to go to a random house party with a friend at a place I've never been. It was my now GF's house and we've been together for 3 years next week. So don't give up on her like others have said. She might just need a little time and if it's a deal breaker for her then that's that. There will be other women and I'm sure you'll meet the right one for you at some point scissor. You're a very good writer. I enjoyed your story. Hey I have PTSD from getting sexually assaulted when I was kid. I'm a grown woman now and still dealing with it. But I understood that to have a meaningful romantic relationship you need to open up to your partner no matter what. Otherwise it'll never work out in long run. If that other person not be there by our side after you show your most vulnerable side to them. They don't deserve you at all. They are not the one because the right one will never make you feel bad about your terrible life. Experiences. They will appreciate for still being strong and moving on and trusting them enough to open up. With the right one, it'll only strengthen your relationship. So talk to your woman why she's being distance. And if she's being distance because she thinks less of you for opening up or weirded out of you. Realize that she's not the right person for you. I wish you all the best you are a survivor. And an extremely brave person and a good man. Hugs. Never served myself. Though most of my family has and the ones that didn't became first responders. I'm a paramedic myself. And I can totally understand that feeling of enjoyment even during the worst days. I've been to mass casualties scenes. The screaming. The blood. The broken people. I know most people would be absolutely horrified to be around that. However I had a sense of enjoyment from it. It has to be the body's way of coping with highly stressful scenes. It was the reason I kept going back to triage the scene. I do hope she can grow to understand and accept how you felt during your time over there. Be well. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.